A bit of breaking news just in as we do our uh, midweek update. The Pittsburgh Steelers have acquired one LaShawn McCoy from the Buffalo Bills in exchange for a 2020 third round pick. LaShawn McCoy and the Bills were at an impasse on a contract extension. The Bills weren't willing to extend him a contract. You already know LaShawn McCoy over the age of 30 now. And the Bills just felt it wasn't in their best interest to extend him. And they didn't want to lose him just for nothing. And there was a team willing out there to give up a pick in order to acquire the services of LaShawn McCoy. And it's a team that lost Le'Veon Bell in the offseason as Bell made his way to Chicago. So LaShawn McCoy no longer a Buffalo Bill. Ty Montgomery going to slot right into that running back one. And I think he's going to do a very good job of it. He has a bit more pop to him, younger, fresher legs, and he can do a lot more in the passing game. The Bills also making a few other moves as they signed right end Demarcus Walker to a one-year deal. He should just add some nice depth to that right side. And they also signed J.D. McKissick to just add a bit more depth to the running back position after trading McCoy, just have an extra body back there. Just seems like a better deal for the Bills. Um, just a flurry of moves from them. Uh, you know, the, they get back from... Or they didn't get back. They beat the... They beat the Jets. Flipped my mind for a split second. Beating the Jets on Sunday. And then next morning, this trade comes in. And uh, definitely shakes, shakes things up a bit. As we take a look at the AFC East, it's the Buffalo Bills leading, or not necessarily leading it, as, them, as the Bills and the Dolphins both have a record of 2-0. Then take a look at the New York Jets at 0-2. Uh, what makes that 0-2 also worse is definitely losing uh, Sam Darnold for the year. Guys, to deal with Teddy Bridgewater. See if he can hold it down for that Jets team. It's just a shame what happened there. And then you take a look at the New England Patriots. They are 0-2 on the season. When was the last time the Patriots started 0-2? I, I, I just don't know. I mean, it almost feels like that team's never started 0-2. It's just... The Patriots 0-2, it just d doesn't doesn't seem right. Let me take a look at the AFC North as the Cleveland Browns are leading that division 2-0 on the year so far. The Steelers just trading for the services of LaShawn McCoy are 1-1. One one. Bengals also 1-1. One and, one. and the Bills' next opponent, the Ravens, are 0-2. The team that went to the AFC Championship game last year, 0-2. That's a tough break. The Texans start the season 2-0, along with the Jaguars, also at 2-0. Looks like they have things somewhat tidied over compared to last season. we we'll take a look at the Indianapolis Colts. Andrew Luck, 1-1 one and one so far on the season. Definitely going to step things up. And the Titans, also a good team last season, 0-2. And, and we'll take a look at the AFC West, which may be the weakest division in all of the AFC. Um... I know every team has a win, but every team also has a loss. So, sort of see just every team in their one and one on the year is uh, just somewhat weird. You normally don't see that after you know two weeks of NFL action. Someone would at least have a pretty clear, definitive lead in the division. Uh, not so with the AFC West. It is so in the NFC North, though. As we move over to the NFC side of things, Packers two and zero so far in the season. As the Lions and Bears trail at 1-1, one one respectively, and the Minnesota Vikings 0-2. Had a somewhat disappointing season last year. Definitely not what they expected. When you go out and you give Kirk Cousins the type of money he got, you're definitely not paying to start the season 0-2. The Falcons are leading the NFC South at 2-0. The Panthers and Buccaneers both trail at 1-1. One and one. And then you have the New Orleans Saints... At 0-2, we have to remember their starting quarterback is Brett Hundley, as Drew Brees retired in the offseason, somewhat shockingly. I mean, definitely he had way more left in the tank, but he decided to retire. 
And now the Saints uh, begin the long process of trying to find a quarterback. The Redskins, they might need to fight a quarterback in a few seasons, but so far Alex Smith seems to be stemming the tide for them as they are 2-0 leading the NFC East. Cowboys out 1-1 with Dak. Tyrod Taylor leading the Giants to a 1-1 record, which is better than the record of the Philadelphia Eagles, who may be having a second season of Super Bowl hangover. And it's the Los Angeles Rams, of course, leading the NFC West. This may actually be the worst division in football. Uh, you have the Rams at 2-0. You have the Cardinals at 1-1 and with Joss Rosen. And then you have the 49ers and Seahawks both at 0-2. It's kind of weird how those two teams were the class of the NFC just a few years ago. And now they're already back in the cellar of the West. Just sort of insane to see that happen so quickly. And the rise of the Rams has just been absolutely nuts for the city of Los Angeles. We're going to take a look at the league leaders right now. Josh Allen leading the way in passing, or at least passing yards, already at 815. That performance he had last week was absolutely nuts. Uh, Tyrod Taylor doing things in New York, has not thrown an interception yet. Uh, 666 yards, so I hope none of you are religious out there, because that may be a bad omen for the Giants' season. Then we take a look at rushing, Ezekiel Elliott leading the way, LaShawn McCoy second in rushing, uh, so, you know, somewhat maybe possibly still productive, but the Bills, they'd rather get away from him sooner than later and not get anything in return. And then we take a look at receiving, Randall Cobb leading the way in receptions along with Golden Tate, four touchdowns on the year for him, 284 yards. Go down a little bit further on this list, you see Geronimo Allison, 222 yards, two touchdowns, averaging around 13 yards, almost 14 per catch, and uh, has about 40 yards after the catch. He's ahead of Odell, and gets some really good receivers here. That was one heck of a pickup for this Buffalo team. Really nice things. You see tight ends in here. A lot of tight ends mixing in here. With these receiving stats, you know, tight ends have become such a integral part of NFL offenses in the modern day. And we are going to now take a look at the opponent for next week, which will be the Baltimore Ravens, the Bills. Welcome the Ravens to the new Buffalo Stadium. And the Bills are the Bills coming off two great wins, and then the Ravens, uh, they got smoked absolutely smoked by the Cleveland Browns and they lose in overtime to the Miami Dolphins so this is a team that could be potentially one and one at the very best but right now their record is 0 and 2 and if you're the Buffalo Bills you got to put in that work and you got to make them 0 and 3 and get a little bit of payback for that AFC championship game last year so I want to welcome you all to this weekly update we'll try to do this more often and uh, I'll see you guys for the game. It will be the Buffalo Bills taking on the Baltimore Ravens.